Hey everyone, here today to talk about the causes of World War I. So the essential questions, the main focus of today is to explain the main causes of World War I and to identify the Central Powers and the Allied Powers on a map. So let us get it started. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of you guys remember this probably from U.S. history. This isn't the first time you've been... Um, you know, kind of introduced to this kind of topic. I know a lot of you in U.S. history were probably taught the causes of World War I with the word main. M stands for militarism, A stands for alliances, I stands for imperialism, N stands for nationalism. So that's a really great way of doing it. Another great way of remembering the causes of World War I um, is to think of the word mania, um, which is kind of the same thing. So you have militarism, alliances, nationalism, imperialism, and then the one difference is this one adds assassination. Okay, so for some people that's maybe a little easier way uh, of remembering uh, how World War I got started. I always like to think of World War I and, and the causes of World War I in, in kind of a personal way. Um, you look at the causes that I just mentioned, okay, um, and, and what I like to think of is that those causes create an environment where a fight is likely. Okay, now I know people always kind of like think of school fights, you know, fights that happen between, you know, two boys or, or two girls, um, and, and in all likelihood, um, there, there's never really just one cause, okay, and it doesn't just happen immediately. There's usually some buildup, there's usually some tension that builds up between two, two individuals, and eventually something just kind of sparks them, um, you know, and they kind of erupt in a fight, okay. So, for instance, uh, I have kind of like a little breakdown over here on on how a fight might likely to start. So in my scenario, I have two boys. Uh, they're going to get into a fight here. So let's kind of like run through this little scenario here. I know it's going to be kind of lame, but just you know, stay with me. All right. It's going to start with a girl. All right. Um, the one guy is dating the other guy's ex-girlfriend. Okay. Which obviously is not a very ideal situation. Both guys are on the football team. All right. And to make it worse, they're both competing um, for the same you know position. All right, um, so now we're starting to get even a little more tenser. So you have one guy dating the other guy's girlfriend. Okay, now they're both competing. Um, they're both competing for the same position on the football team, and there's a little smack talk going on. Both guys are, you know, talking smack about the other as far as you know the girlfriend or the, you know, the position on the on the football team. Okay, and to make it worse, both guys belong to different cliques. Okay, one of the guys is a quote unquote a trucker. The other guy is a preppy. Okay, so now you have all four of these things um, really kind of building a very, very tense environment. Okay, uh, each one of these things alone is not going to start a fight. Okay, uh, people can be for positions all the time. Sometimes everyone talks a little bit of smack. Um, people are in different cliques. Okay, uh, and usually just one of these things isn't going to start a fight. Okay, but if you add all those things together, it creates a really, really tense environment. Okay, and when you have that tense environment, all you need is a spark. All right, and so in our little silly scenario here, that spark would be both guys are walking down the hallway and bump into each other, and the one guy spills a soda on the ground, and boom goes the dynamite. We have a fight. Okay, and I think that's kind of the, a really easy way of thinking of World War One and how it got started. So let's kind of get started. Let's kind of go through. Um, some of the causes of World War I. So we're going to kind of go through it in the main uh, way. So militarism, alliances, imperialism, and then nationalism. Okay, so the first one is called militarism. That's really the first cause of World War I. And I think oftentimes this is the most misunderstood cause uh, of World War I. All right, militarism basically is when a country glorifies their military, builds their military up, and allows the military to have more of an influence on politics. And I think that last thing I just mentioned is really the the part that kind of jumps into um, kind of why this is a cause for World War I. Okay? Uh, the fact that because the militaries became so important in many of these European nations meant that a lot of these military generals or admirals or whatever uh, had a lot more influence on politics. Okay? And whenever you would come to a problem, you know, a dispute between um, another nation, um, because the military had more of a say in it, uh, they were much more likely to pursue a more aggressive solution to the problem. So instead of talking your problems out, um, you know, if, if the military had more of a say in politics, um, 
you know, they'd be much more likely to kind of resort to violence or force or threat of force uh, instead of kind of just talking things out. Okay, and so during the you know the the, war, the years before the war um, started, um, pretty much all the countries started building up their militaries. Germany and Great Britain got into a big time naval build up. Uh, where they both started to kind of build their navies up really big, and all the countries started building large standing armies. So, I mean, there was definitely kind of a, a tense environment started with these build-up of large militaries and the, and the influence of military leaders on, uh, on politics. Uh, another cause of World War I, and I think this is pretty simple to understand, is that these countries got into, oopsies, these countries got into uh, pre-war alliances, okay? Uh, and they felt that if they were in alliances, they would be, uh, they would be a lot more safe, okay? And so prior to the war, we have the Triple Alliance, which is these guys right in here. So you have Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. And then the Triple Entente uh, was Great Britain, France, and Russia. Okay, um, so these three guys were the Triple Entente. Triple Alliance was, uh, um, like I said, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. A really great way of remembering which one's which is that entente sounds like a French word, so that's where France is. Okay, it is important to note, though, that once the war starts, Italy will actually switch sides and go to the Allied side. And that the Central Powers, which is what the Triple Alliance becomes, um, they will gain the Ottoman Empire and another country called Bulgaria, which is right here, uh, as an ally as well. So this is a cause because now... When there is a dispute between one country and another, it has the ability to pull all the countries in, which is exactly what happens. Originally, World War I starts as a dispute between Austria-Hungary and the tiny little nation of Serbia. Okay? Um, and so that, that's really where World War I starts. I'm sorry. Right over here. Um, so moving on. Imperialism is a, another cause of World War I, and the main reason for this being a cause is because the countries of Europe are essentially competing uh, for colonies, okay? And whenever people compete, they're much more likely to get into a fight. If you think about uh, most people, I would say most people usually don't get into fights or push people or punch people. Uh, but a lot of times when people are like playing sports, they have, m they're much more likely to swear at somebody or to push somebody or to get angry with somebody. I think it's because when we compete and we get really intense, uh, we're much more likely to fight. Okay, so same thing. These countries on a large scale are competing for colonies, and whenever there's competition, you're much more likely to get into a fight. Just think hockey or something like that. All right. And then finally, uh, I think the major cause of World War I is the concept of nationalism, and I think this is oftentimes also very misunderstood as far as being a cause of World War I. Okay. Most people recognize that nationalism is considered patriotism in one's country, and that is definitely true. Uh, but more importantly, I think it's also pride in one's ethnic group. And ultimately, that's the more important part of nationalism as far as what starts World War I. Now, clearly, once war seemed likely, um, many, many people, many people in many nations were very uh, excited about the prospect of going to war. Here you can see a, a train full of German soldiers that are excited about going to war against Germany. Okay? Um, you know, and countries didn't want to back down. Countries wanted to appear to be proud, to be strong. Uh, France specifically wanted to get a little payback on the Germans for the embarrassing defeat they suffered in the Franco-Prussian War. Okay, so once war seemed likely, um, nationalism definitely made it really hard for countries to back down and, uh, and not get involved in the war. But I think the very immediate cause of World War I is the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. Okay, Franz Ferdinand was the um, heir to the throne of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Okay, and one of the things we see happening in the early 20th century is that Austria-Hungary, which is just full of all of these different ethnic groups, okay, is um, you know trying to really gain more of an influence on Serbia. Okay, which is a country right here, and a lot of Serbians already are living within uh, Austria-Hungary. Okay, and the Serbians don't like that. The Serbians don't like being under control uh, of the Austro-Hungarians. And what we see happening is uh, uh, there's one Serbian nationalist who is, basically hates the Austrians, 
and uh, he takes the opportunity when it presents itself to assassinate Franz Ferdinand. Uh, and he shoots the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne uh, because he is not proud, or he's, excuse me, he's incredibly proud of, of Serbia and Serbian people, and he doesn't want them being under the control of the Austrians. And that's really kind of what catapults Europe into war, is this pride in one's ethnicity, in one's ethnic group, and not wanting to be controlled by another people. All right, so here we see the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. Franz Ferdinand, um, this is a picture taken just before he's killed. That's Franz Ferdinand. Uh, this is his wife, Sophie. Um, there's another picture of Franz Ferdinand right there. Uh, and he's assassinated by um, Gavrilo Princip, who was part of a terrorist organization known as the Black Hand, which sounds kind of scary, I guess. All right. Uh, but anyways, Archduke Franz Ferdinand is killed by Gavrilo Princip. It's kind of an embarrassing assassination attempt. Um, Gavrilo Princip was uh, in the crowd as, uh, as the Archduke drove past on his car. And, and the first time the Archduke drove past the car, uh, Gavrilo Princip wussed out and uh, didn't have the courage to shoot. Um, but unfortunately for the Archduke, his driver didn't know where he was going. Um, and uh, I, I guess reportedly um, had to come back the exact same way um, and, uh, and, and basically stopped right in front of Gavrilo Princip and gave him another opportunity um, to shoot. And he, of course, did. Um, and so once it is clear that Franz Ferdinand is dead, uh, obviously Austria-Hungary is incredibly angry, and they basically threaten Serbia. Okay? Um, and basically Austria wants war. And now that Austria wants war, Austria's allies will come to their aid, and Serbia's allies will come to her aid. Um, so now we have the, like I said, now we have war. So when we look at all the causes of World War One, we have alliances, we have militarism, we have imperialism, we have nationalism, and with the dynamite, we have World War One. Okay? And here's where the dominoes begins to fall. Um, Russia is allied to Serbia, and once Austria starts threatening Serbia, Russia comes to Serbia's aid, and they start threatening Austria. Once Russia starts threatening Austria, Germany comes to Austria's aid, and Germany threatens Russia. Okay, Austria then declares war on Russia, Germany declares war on Russia, and now that Germany declares war on Russia, now France jumps into the whole scenario, and now France declares war um, or Germany declares war on France. Now that Germany has to fight France, Germany invades France through Belgium. Because they go through Belgium, Great Britain, who is allied to Belgium, declares war on Germany, and the United States is just kind of hanging out across the ocean. Okay, so it gets a little confusing. All right. Uh, but first you have Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia, then you have Germany declares war on Russia, Germany declares war on France, France declares war on Austria-Hungary, England declares war on Germany, then declares war on Austria-Hungary, and then the Ottoman Empire gets in and declares war on all that. So it gets a little confusing, all right? And we're not going to have to remember the, the, cor the course of events. It's, it's obviously kind of a mess, okay? Uh, and here's kind of an article from The Onion that kind of makes fun of everything. Uh, so it says, war declared by all. Austria declares war on Serbia, declares war on Germany, declares war on France, declares war on uh, Turkey, declares war on Russia, declares war on Bulgaria, declares war on Britain. Ottoman Empire almost declares war on itself. Nations struggle to remember allies. Okay, and then a couple funnier, um, kind of like subtitles here. Um, assassination of Archduke spreads fear at Archduke Convention. Area drunk declares war on Ireland. Okay, um, so anyways, um, kind of a comical way of ending the lecture. Okay, so feel free to watch as much as you'd like. Thank you.